Welcome everyone to Art of Living. My name is Arpan Talwar and today we have Dr. Mandeep with us who would help us understand when we have gone through a biopsy of a breast cancer tissue, how should we interpret that particular biopsy? Thank you so much Dr. Mandeep for being with us today. We would request you to take the audience through the particular session and give them this knowledge on how they should interpret the breast cancer tissue biopsy report. Yeah, thank you, Arpan. So, hello everybody and namaste. So, when somebody presents to us with a breast lump, so the first investigation which we are ordering is that we do a breast biopsy. Now, whether the biopsy is a core needle, excisional, that's a separate context altogether. But yes, as a message to all that the preferred diagnostic biopsy should be a core needle biopsy. Now, Breast cancer, as we all know, is the most common cancer which affects the women nowadays. It has like 1 million new cases worldwide which are occurring every year. And breast cancer basically arises from the breast tissue. And what part of breast tissue? It is the milk forming tissue. That is the lining of the milk ducts and lobules that supply milk into these ducts. So this is the tissue which from where the breast cancer actually develops. And uh, I really want to explain you the concept of terminal ductal lobular unit. So when we order a breast biopsy, so uh, in breast biopsy, we are looking at two things. One is that what is the histopathological picture of the cancer which we are getting? And secondly, what is the molecular signature of the cancer? So first I would be describing what is the histopathological picture what by histopathological big picture i mean that the description which we get on a biopsy what is it invasive ductal cancer invasive lobular cancer ductal cancer in situ lobular cancer in situ sometimes we get very specific terms like medullary cancer metaplastic cancer so what this all histopathological picture is all about so before that i want that we should understand the concept of terminal ductal lobular unit so as on the left hand side uh, we, there is a picture of the breast and describing the breast anatomy. So breast, as we all know, is basically composed of skin, nipple on the outside and inside it is the milk forming tissue and the stroma and the ligaments. So what I mean by stroma, stroma is where, uh, as you can see, the white portion inside the breast is stroma. In that stroma, the blood vessels, the lymph ducts, the ligaments, the muscle apparatus to pump the milk out is there. And when you see the, uh, when I describe the milk forming apparatus, it is that I am describing from reverse that in nipple, there are multiple openings of the milk ducts. And if we trace this milk ducts, they, the milk ducts goes back into the breast stroma and it starts draining into the milk lobules, which we say there are multiple lobules in the breast. And in each lobule, there is a, the functioning unit is a terminal ductal lobular unit. So a lobule is composed of multiple terminal ductal lobular units. In terminal ductal lobular unit, what I want uh, that uh, we can understand is that the milk duct actually then branches out and drains to one duct, goes to one terminal ductal lobular unit. And in that terminal ductal lobular unit, it forms the extra lobular duct and the intra lobular duct. So intra lobular duct is then finally is the area where the lobules lobules is the area where the milk formation occurs and the lobules actually drain to the intra lobular duct it the intra lobular duct then drains to the extra lobular duct and the extra lobular duct then drains to the main duct and then main duct drains to the nipple so this is how the milk formation and milk draining actually occurs and the cancer which occurs inside this milk forming apparatus is the conventional standard breast cancer which we get majority of times in rare rare occasions sometimes the stroma that is the uh, tissue which is not the milk forming uh, apparatus like the lymphatics the blood vessels the muscles so they might form cancers such as breast sarcoma breast lymphoma so this is how a normal description of where the breast cancer occurs and then I am coming back to the terminal ductal lobular unit again. So when a cancer or a malignant or a neoplasm 
develops within the ductal tissue it is called as ductal carcinoma and when the origin of cancer occurs from the lobules it is called the lobular carcinoma and uh, can we just go to the next slide so i again want to explain the concept of what is in situ carcinoma and what is an invasive carcinoma like when we getting a biopsy report sometimes it is mentioned the ductal car carcinoma dcis in situ and another times we are getting a report in which we are saying invasive ductal carcinoma so uh, alpen please go back to the previous slide yeah so if you look at the terminal ductal lobular unit when the cancer or the cancer forming or the neoplastic process is still within the ductal or the lobular apparatus that is it is the ductal the duct wall has not been breached the lobular wall has not been breached and the cancer cell has not gone into the stroma so till the time it is confined to the ductal or the lobular apparatus we say it in situ cancer and when it is breach the duct duct root kya and then it goes into the stroma then we say it is an invasive cancer so what is the difference the in situ cancer basically it what we mean by in situ cancer is that the cancer is just confined to that area so if, when the cancer cells break through the duct wall and goes into the stroma that is the time when they encounter the blood vessels the lymphatics and that is the time when they go into that uh, blood vessels or lymphatics and then spread to the other parts of the body so when we are saying in situ cancer it means that the cancer is still in the initial process it is not it doesn't has a potential to spread to other parts of the body and we categorize it at stage 0 early stage 1 when we say invasive uh, ductal ca cancer or invasive carcinoma it means that now the cancer has we are diagnosing the cancer at a stage where it has a potential to spread to other parts of the body because it has breached the duct it is into the stroma and it might have gone in the cancer cell might have gone into the blood vessel and it might have been uh, it might have progressed to the other parts of the body so this is a basic information and how what is the difference between in situ and uh, invasive now coming to the first variety is the ductal carcinoma in situ it means that the ductal the neoplastic cell uh, uh, process is starting from the ducts as i have explained previously and it has not breached the stroma and when we say ductal carcinoma in situ then sometimes we do describe variates various histological pictures like if there might be a comedo kind of picture so comedo is a multiple cells all around and then there is in between area of some blood uh, uh, blood vessels or there is some area of that uh, the dead tissue then there is a cribriform cribriform is slightly less uh, uh, bunch of the cells the cells are loosely back papilla is like the papillary formation is there and then we also categorize into the how bad the act the, the cancer cell is that is what the nuclear atp and we understand that if on uh, microscope the cancer cell is slightly bad looking bad looking in a sense that the nucleus is is we have certain features when we say that nuclear so it is a bad looking that is the nuclear features the cytoplasm so the cell is basically composed of a cytoplasm and in that there is a nucleus so there must be certain features when we see that this is slightly bad this has a cell potential to go to other parts of the body so this is the degree of nuclear atp then as the cancer formation occurs the central part of some part of the cells which don't receive the blood supply or the oxygen it starts dying so we understand that agar if the cancer is growing rapidly the cell death would also occur rapidly so this is the necrosis part of it like if i say comedo comedo has more necrosis cribriform has less necrosis and then there is mitotic activity and calcification so these two things these three things when we uh, look into it and then we grade whether it's a low grade in situ cancer ductal it's intermediate grade or high grade so ductal carcinoma in situ will invariably majority of times will progress into carcinoma ultimately so if it is a high grade it might progress very fast and the cancer which it forms will be aggressive if it is a low grade the time it will take might be longer and cancer it will form will be a low grade cancer so this is a, how the ductal carcinoma actually progresses now coming to the lobular carcinoma 
So ductal carcinoma, the cells are still within the ducts when they start forming. In lobular carcinoma, the cells uh, which turn malignant start uh, from the lobules. So when I say in, within the lobules, and what is the difference between the two? When I was describing nuclear ATP and all those features, so the bad looking, the kitna ganda hai, how bad is the nucleus, what is the malignant potential? So there is a difference. So DCIS, the cells are more aggressive. In lobular, the cells are slightly less aggressive. They are good looking, they are better cells. And another important thing is that lobular carcinoma might just be there. It is not mandatory that it will definitely turn cancerous or invasive, whereas ductal will definitely. Secondly, the another feature of lobular car carcinoma is that it, the time it takes to develop cancer a frank cancer is a long time normally it as we have mentioned that the invasive carcinoma might develop around 20 years so this is the time which it takes and also the another important feature of lobular is that normally what happens in ductal uh, malignant process that it there's one breast and there must be there there is majority of time one single focus whereas in lobular in one breast there must be multiple focus and also, uh, there is a 30% probability that the same malignant process might be occurring in the uh, other side of the breast or the other breast. Whereas in ductal, uh, the process that if the, you have a cancer in one breast, the, the chances that it will have you have a cancerous process or a malignant process in the other breast is around 5% or even less. Whereas lobular, the chances are it might be as high as 30%. But the other side is that lobular is slightly less aggressive it doesn't spread very fast Lo ductal is aggressive it spreads fast but lobular has multiple sites of origin and therefore when we talk about ductal carcinoma in situ the first thing is to take it out do a surgery now there's no question about that when there is a lobular carcinoma in situ then it is not mandatory that we go and excise it first of all it doesn't have that much malignant potential that we uh, it is definite that it will definitely turn into cancer. Secondly, if we start excising lobular carcinoma in situ, we might end up removing a large part of the breast or both the breast. But the catch is that sometimes what happens is what happens is that when we do a, a core biopsy, we might be capturing the cells which are in the process of lobular carcinoma in situ process. We might be missing the frank malignant cancer. So before we say that it is a lobular carcinoma in situ. We definitely make sure that we get an MRI done and there are certain IHC markers like E-Gatrin, beta gatherin are also put to doubly confirm what we are saying. Yeah, so this is all about in-situ cancer. Now when I talk about uh, so the frank invasive... So I, have a, I have a, sorry, I'm just jumping in between. I have a, I have a question here. So generally, uh, do we uh, imagine that if it is an in-situ uh, uh, carcinoma, it would generally be stage zero, stage one? Majority of times, if it is in situ carcinoma, it is at least stage zero, stage one, and we definitely need to confirm it on radiolo radiology. Uh, it is only that we might, uh, that as I said, that our core needle biopsy might have just harvested the in situ cancer. Mm -hmm. There might be a probability that there must be there, there is a frank malignant process which we have not sampled. If that is the case, then obviously there is an, a, a stage that it's an upstaging. Whereas in C2 is definitely a very, very early stage of stage zero. All right. Thank you, Dr. Mal. Yeah. So uh, coming to the ductal carcinoma, this is the majority of times when a breast lump is biopsied. This is the biopsy report which we are getting in majority of times. And this is the most common form of uh, how the breast cancer actually looks like. So in this, there is no uh, particular features like there's no particular morphological or kind of a picture which the pathologist sees when it looks into the microscope. It is a heterogeneous kind of collection. There are bad looking cells which are in the ducts and they have you know, mm -hmm. breached the duct. They are going into the stroma here and there. Some of the times it is seen that the cell is going into the blood vessel or lymphatic. So this is what we get majority of time and this is like we say Invasive ductal cancer NOS that not otherwise specified. It means that we are not getting any particular picture. But on some occasions, we might get 
the a report that it's a tubular uh, invasive can cancer we get a cribriform invasive cancer a mucinous invasive cancer so what happens is that which it the large majority of the microscopic field we get a certain variety there must be tubule formation there must be some papilla formation that lipid rich there is a lot of fat deposit in secretory there is a lot of secretions which are going into the ductal uh, epithelium and in mucin there must be a mucin collection around uh, the cells so this is uh, what a basic picture it gives like so majority of times when we get a report which has a, a description of a particular type that it is a tubular it's a medullary it's, it's a secretory it's a mucinous it is a slightly better indication than some when we get uh, invasive ductal cancer nos that is not other specified majority of times the well formed so it is a concept is ke agar something is well formed it is less aggressive whereas something which is which doesn't have any form is more aggressive but there are certain varieties of say, these well formed cancers also like macro papillary epocrine is like how the sweat glands look like metaplastic when there is a ductal cancerous and they also start forming muscles or they start forming cells of a squamous epithelium which lines the buccal the cheek mucosa or food pipe and this gives us indication that it's a bad prognosis it's a bad looking cancer as compared to standard ductal cancer then there is a neuroendocrine variety which occurs in the breast also and neuroendocrine variety can be low grade or high grade depending on how the pathology uh, how the how the pathologist grades that now uh, the the last part of this description is of a standard breast is the invasive lobular cancer so ductal cancer definitely is more it is slightly more aggressive lobular is less on the side it is like 15% around the total and the good part is that it is less aggressive the lobular cancer normally affects the women of slightly older age group like they have normally post menopausal 50 plus or even 60 plus but the lobular cancer when we are getting a diagnosis of lobular cancer or lobular cancer in situ we need to make sure by our imaging that we might there might be a another a cancerous formation in another part of the breast or the other opposite side breast so that is an i am reiterating this fact again that lobular cancer is multicentric multifocal and in both the breast sometimes it occurs the classical picture of lobular cancer is when there is a description even when you look at the lobular cancer reports so there is a description of the word mentioning india file pattern of the uh, malignant cells this is a very characteristic picture of picture of lobular cancer and this is what the pathologist normally writes and then there are certain varieties of lobular also like pleomorphic of signet ring which are slightly aggressive as compared to the standard classical right so this is the basic uh, description which i wanted to give to our viewers about when they get the biopsy report and when the biopsy report mentions ductal cancer invasive cancer in situ cancer or um, frank malignant cancer now we also uh, whenever we are doing a biopsy we are majority of times asking the pathologist to also do the ihc marking once the histopathological confirmation is done that it's a malignant process so when we do the ihc marking we are basically looking to a, for a molecular signature of the cancer so by molecular signature of the cancer i mean to say is that we do these four are the basic uh, signatures or the tests which we order it's an er that's a estrogen receptor er that's a progesterone receptor hertinu it is again a tyrosine kinase inhibitor it's a gene process gene genetic uh, process or a gene marker which suggests that uh, it is also suggested that when the tki or this gene is active the cancer is slightly more aggressive as compared to when the this gene is not active and then e67 or ki67 basically it gives us the indication that out of 100 cells how many cells are actually dividing so it is basically expressed in percentage so if our biopsy report comes up with a molecular signature of a high er positivity a high er positivity that is estrogen receptor is uh, er and pr are really high and it is mentioned that 8 by 8 6 7 by 8 or percentages as high as 80 percent hertinu is 1 plus and ki67 is slightly on the lower side less than 20 percent 5 percent 10 percent 15 percent so we categorize this into luminal a whereas when we are getting a report like 
इट्स अ ई आर पॉजिटिव पी आर नेगेटिव ई आर नेगेटिव पी आर पॉजिटिव और ई आर पी आर पॉजिटिविटी इज लाइक अराउंड फोर बाय एट थ्री बाय एट फाइव बाय एट और परसेंटेज ट्वेंटी परसेंट थर्टी परसेंट एंड हर्टिन यू समटाइम्स वी आर गेटिंग टू प्लस रिपोर्ट सो हर्टिन यू इज बेसिकली एक्सप्रेस इन वन प्लस टू प्लस एंड थ्री प्लस सो वन प्लस मीन्स इट्स नेगेटिव टू प्लस मीन्स वी आर नॉट श्योर वेदर इट्स नेगेटिव और पॉजिटिव एंड थ्री प्लस मीन्स इट्स डेफिनेटली पॉजिटिव and also when we are not sure where about from the ilc we do a test called as fish test so fish also confirms one step further like we are getting a 2 plus report we are not sure whether we uh, whether it's a positive or a negative then we order fish and fish tells us whether it's positive or neg- negative we can directly order the fish also but since fish takes a slightly more uh, longer time and it's the cost factor is also in- involved so we first go for ilc and then we go for fish testing and uh, coming to the uh, what we were coming back to what uh, we were talking about so if the er pr positivity is slightly lower hertinu is positive or negative and ki67 starts increasing around like more than 20 25% 30% so it means that it's a luminal b categorization and then there is a third criteria called as hertinu plus or hertinu expressed in this ERPR is normally negative or very less positive, and hertinu is a very high positive hertinu expression which we get three plus. Or fish also suggests it's a very highly positive, and KI67 is also on the higher side, more than 40 percent, generally 50, 60. So this is a hertinu overexpress, and then the last variety which we get is a triple negative or a basal variety in which ERPR hertinu is all negative, majority of times. in this triple negative variety we have high ki67 index but on some occasions we do get uh, a low ki67 or a low grade cancer also as a triple negative cancer now coming to the last part of our discussion today is that how do we actually the categorization of luminal a b c a b hertinu and basal actually helps us in decision making so the good part of the breast cancer is that 50% of the breast cancers they still form in luminal a and luminal a is a good prognostic variety it has very high hormone positivity rate it is a low grade variant the majority of ductal cancer which have particular histopathology like tubular cribriform or even lobular they fall in luminal a and when we get a luminal a we are slightly reassured in luminal a the majority the basic treatment lies with surgery and hormonal therapy and chemotherapy and radiation is basically play the adjunct part when we come to luminal b we start to understand that the cancer is not that erpr positive so means that it is not hugely hormone driven there must be other pathways which also lead to this cancer formation hertinu can be positive can be negative and ki67 also starts rising so this is slightly aggressive and in this variety we definitely surgery is the uh, surgery will remain treatment for all curable breast cancers but yes then we start start to understand it is not the only hormonal which will help we definitely need to go for more systemic intervention we might look for targeted we might like look, look for other metabolic therapies which will help in specifically luminal b cancers and a grade 2 ductal cancer microbabillary cancer certain cribri from varieties also and comedo varieties form into this luminal b when we come to the hertinu overexpress again this is the 15% of the total breast cancer and hertinu overexpressed cancers are basically those cancers which the erpr definitely is not very positive and hertinu is very very strong positive this is a cancer which is which requires targeted therapy or an adriamycin based chemotherapy definitely and this uh, cancer definitely is uh, better controlled when we add targeted therapy that is trazodazumab or herceptin and now since pergeta and all other drugs are also in form so when we add this there is definitely a better disease control so if we are giving a targeted therapy in hertinu overexpressed we are basically nullifying the effect of hertinu overexpression it really helps the patient and last part is a basal type in which we are talking about triple negative can- cancers the triple negative is slightly uh, if we look at the pathological part of it so it is not the cancer which forms from the uh, so when i Talk about a duct epithelium. So there are multiple layers of cells in the epithelium lining. So there are around five, six, seven layers of cell, and then there is a basal layer of cell. Then there is a basement membrane that is the uh, duct uh, stroma, and then 
goes uh, duct uh, uh, partition and then you enter the stoma. So the, when the cancer formation occurs in these basal layer of cells, so they don't express all those hormonal receptors, continue receptors, they're all negative. And sometimes they have a high KI67 index. And these cancers, some uh, like even particular histopathological types like medullary, adenoid, cystic, secretory. Secretory is a kind of cancer which occurs in juvenile age group like 19 years, 17 years. So these cancers are triple negative. Triple negative, normally if it's an IDC, not otherwise specified, is an aggressive variety. And triple negative is also related to the BRCA gene which is there and which can run in families. And uh, the other specific types like adenoid cystic secretory though they are rare, but if they occur, it's a low grade, good type of triple negative cancer. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, Arpan. And uh, I hope we'll be able to give some clarity on how to interpret a biopsy report, what the biopsy report is all about when we are going for a breast cancer diagnosis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Uh Dr. Mandeep, thank you so, so much. I'm sure that our audience, when they will look at this web series of uh, understanding their diagnosis, I'm sure uh, the way you have explained in simple language, uh, you know, patients would understand, would be educated, would be more informed on the next steps that they should take if they have been detected with this, with this disease. And I'm sure with this knowledge, they will be able to ask more informed questions uh, to their oncologist and be able to take the right decisions. With that, thank you so much, Dr. Mandeep. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks to our audience uh, uh, for looking at this video, for viewing this video from Art of Healing Cancer. I hope this video series will be able to help you. In case if there are any questions to the audience, please leave a comment in the comment sections and I would request Dr. Mandeep to address that for you. Thank you so much and have a great day ahead, everyone. Thank you so much.